Hello everyone and welcome to Nanalyze at Dawn. I mean your host or I mean your host. Doing some other stuff earlier. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we are doing some replay requests. Starting out with an FFA, which I will note from the beginning, I am actually playing this at 1.2 times speed. I might speed it up, I might slow it down. We'll see what happens. But <laughs> Ed and Ter already short pointing out, need to ask Shadow Fury to cast this. Well, they did, and I am, so yeah, you're, there you go. Anyway, Anir starting out with in the top right corner with spiders. Spiders also is a right's choice in the top left. Bottom right, or bottom left rather, we have spiders for Thomas. And the bottom right, rounding it out, completing the pattern, we have shield bot for Jasper. Because Jasper is an iconoclast. Doesn't, doesn't do what everyone else does. Doesn't follow trends. Does his own thing. So Jasper with the hipster shield bots. Everyone else with the spiders. I mean, sandcastles, spiders make sense, although admittedly the moats do make spiders a little bit less viable than you think, but, and there's still a lot of cliffs. Also, sandcastle has some very soft terrain. Like, we're going to start seeing the game get into it where, you know, we get combat going on in the middle of the map, and, oh boy, we are going to see it. it it's going to, it's going to be there. I, we'll see. You will see a lot of craters, and that's where spiders are going to shine. In the meantime... We do have, of course, other stuff, which aren't spiders. So to that end, we have Jasper setting up actually kind of slowly. <laughs> like, Anir is the one who's really just ripping ahead when it comes to their economy. The rest of the players having a bit of a harder time getting set up as quickly. I mean, it's not impossible, but it's proven to be a little bit difficult also. Okay, I'm not sure why. I apologize for what you're about to see. Oops. Not that. Not not that either. That's the, that's the same thing. Okay, that's weird. Why are you not showing me... I don't use this one very often. This is the... The player list we're using right now is the Deluxe player list, which I don't use very often because I only really need it for things like FFA. Actually, I only need it for FFA. That's the only time I ever need it. Anytime else, it is always the main spectator list because that works for teams. But we have some first off combat here coming in here. A couple fleas coming in scouting out from Thomas. Getting an idea of what is going on around the map. Actually, Thomas, I'm liking this. If you look at Thomas's overall setup, they... Oops. Their overall setup, they do have a reasonably strong amount of radar. Like their opponents, I mean, of course, spiders being what they are, there's a lot of radar. Every welder has, a, or every weaver, rather, has radar attached to them. But Thomas does have the most complete knowledge of what is going on around the map. Although, admittedly, no one really has a great deal of knowledge so far. But I like that. Thomas is turning that into actually quite a strong economy. Already 36 metals, 61 energy. Pulling ahead of a near right off the bat. Though, of course, FFA being what it is, it is tricky to say how this is going to play out. Because, well, FFA, as a rule, is not really a game type that lends itself to easy analysis. You, you can't just say, oh, well, one player has an economic advantage, therefore they're going to win. The players are relatively even in terms of their economy, so it's going to come down a lot to who decides to attack who, and if there's any temporary alliances that are formed as a result. Thomas right now is in a very strong opening position, but of course, they might end up overplaying their hand. If they do, of course, they could get teamed up on. At this point, Anir going towards the center. Not quite able to get the super mechs. Which is, of course, a bit of a pain. I mean, Anir would like that super mechs. They are a bit behind when it comes to economy. Thomas is ahead. Thomas, however, isn't that far ahead yet, though, with the uh, the Moho Geo coming in. Could be. Jasper already with Moho Geo. You have Anir setting that up, and Izzerite as well, going for the dug-in Moho Geo as with Thomas. So Jasper relying a lot on Overdrive, though. We can see already they're, they don't really have a whole lot in the way of actual static mechs. And now the super mechs having gone over to, uh, to Thomas has a reasonably strong defensive infrastructure around it. That's going to be difficult to hold. Gauss turret as well being built up on a little ridge. That'll be interesting. Oh. 
Hatner pointing that out. There, there was a terraform. So terraform, when you do it, you actually create like a terraform nano frame, effectively, and apparently that gives vision. That is bizarre, but good to know. Oh yeah, the thing I wanted to check here. If you're spiders. No, you can't. It, it's purple. Okay. Unless I think it's purple. How deep is this? Oh yeah, that's definitely, that's too deep. That is way too deep. Spiders are not going to be able to go down there. And you're contesting the center though. They're trying to take it. May not work. But of course, the Israel coming into the side. Tomaz is going to start having to fight on two fronts. And the terraform here has not been set up, so the metal extractor very vulnerable to the pickets. Thomas, what are you planning to do from here? Because now, right now we're seeing Jasper going for a bit of a hard defensive push. Getting some anti air, making sure that they're very well defended in their base, so they don't have to worry so much about the anything else coming in from the rest of the game. Which admittedly is a fair concern. I mean, you don't want to get completely sidelined and destroyed by your opponents coming in out of nowhere. At the same time, Jasper has been falling behind. They're going to be depending on the game kind of shifting momentum where they aren't the ones being directly attacked. Because at the moment, they are... They aren't really in this fight. Ooh. Wow, that Gauss... Okay, just barely. That Gauss, not quite in position, but it could actually take out the... The constructor's there. Well, that isn't quite, but eh, it's still... There's Israel coming in here. That's the thing. That's the distraction for this. And now a near building up the metal extractor, which can't really be attacked. Without terraforming, at least. So from here... Jasper... Oh. Oh, nice! Ven it's a Widow already in here, just in case Jasper tries anything tricky. As Jasper has basically been left alone this entire time. They don't have an economic advantage, but they're not that far behind the rest of the game. So they're not in a position where they're out of the game, and they might be able to set up a strong force to get in. So a Widow here for scouting from Anir is a very wise play. Anir taking that center, getting the advantage from there. Of course, again, both Anir and Thomas are kind of putting... I mean, I'm not sure who's going to be the big threat. Thomas had a lot going for them, but now having lost that center mechs, they're still strong. But I'm thinking Anir, Anir could very well be the one to go for. Anir, is, Anir has Widows, also an Ezerides base, I should point out. Both Ezerides base and Jasper, or, and yeah, Jasper's base have Widows. But Ezeride, ooh, they have Owl, they have Thunderbird, they're Getting ready here for a push. Blaze going out there just to get a position to work from. Nice use of the stingers there. Owl's trying to find some opening. First owl going to be shot down. Second owl might have a chance. We'll see what happens. Ooh, nice use of the redbacks there. Or sorry, recluses rather. Same time, owl coming in here. A near... Getting a bit of a better view of Jasper's base. I mean, overall, Anir is in very strong position when it comes to what they know. Yeah, they have pretty much full knowledge of the entire map, one way or the other. Certainly full knowledge of Jasper and Izzeride's bases. Not so much Thomas. They don't have really any knowledge of Thomas's base. But that's fine. They're, they'll figure it out soon enough. I mean, Thomas is kind of static as a threat. They Are they building much of anything? Oh! Oh! Oh, I say that and I speak way too soon. What do we got here? Is that all crabs? That is all crabs. Nothing but crabs. Where is that being sent off to? Looks like it's being sent off to deal with Jasper. Big old tr crab convoy. Has been scouted, though. The Swift from Jasper able to spot it coming. May not be enough. One Swift, two Swifts. 
Now, the, the convoy has been spotted, and it's being dropped off right at the front. There it goes. That's what Thomas has been up to this entire time. Going in for the kill, and nothing really stopping it. These crabs just able to take out the front lines. Transport's just waiting for a few more crabs to be built up, or not? Actually, what is Thomas building? They're building something. I mean, they have the Singularity Reactor. That seems to be their main point of construction. And there it comes, picking up the crabs, setting them up for what will probably be an in-base drop. Jasper, they are not looking too strong here, but Thomas, oh, have they overplayed their hand? Because at the same time, there are a lot of swifts coming in from Izarad. They are well prepared for an air fight. Anir, on the other hand, what are they going for? Ooh, funnel web into Merlin. I'm not so confident that Anir is well prepared for this. Jasper, however, is not really needed to worry. Rather surprisingly, no push coming in. Instead, a Trinity being built up from Thomas. Bit of a risky play, but no one else has gone for anti-nukes. No one's really expecting it. Okay, so there is a Leco. It is something. Oh, but there's the push. That is that the cue? I mean, clearly something's being waited for. Like, Thomas wants to use these craps. And they're waiting for something. It looks like they're waiting for this big push. Waiting for Jasper to get their forces out of position. And then move in. Granted, they're moving to the center. Like, they're going to be spotted. No doubt about it. They're going to be spotted. We check. Okay. Izarai does see it. Does Jasper see it? I don't know. No, they don't. They just bear they don't see it in time. That's the important thing. They do have a couple raptors coming in to try to deal with it, but it's not gonna be enough. Crabs able to get in here. The force is coming back in a position. That might be all that's needed. A couple of the crabs on the high ground are going to cause problems. Because they're basically not being dealt with. Wiping up some of the economy, taking out some of the anti-air. But ultimately, those crabs at the bottom got totally ripped to shreds. Granted, at some cost too and near. But the racketeers are the key thing here. What can the racketeers and Lecos do in combination? Oh, not much anymore. The Lecos no longer really there. Nothing left to hold them. Jasper's base getting heavily attacked. Thomas or is right on a near. I think they see this. I mean, a near must see it. But the real question is how they're going to respond, and I don't see any major responses coming in. Not to mention the crab over here for support in the high ground. Able to basically wipe out Jasper's forces. Anir does see what's going on. Izarai doesn't. Oh no, never mind. Izarai does see that there is a trinity. Where are their anti-nukes? Where are the anti-nukes? Oh, maybe they're just waiting. They're just keeping in mind. Just, like, built, like... I'm to get an anti-nuke up sooner rather than later. But I don't see any anti-nukes queued up. Oh dear. Well, that trinity could be quite effective. I mean, Jasper has basically been taken out of the fight. They're... Yeah, they are done. Anir coming in from the north. Just applying pressure so Jasper can't really build up anything. He's a ride... Like I said, they've taken the air game entirely to themselves. They're just biding their time finding an opening. And the crabs have been dealt with, but Jasper has been knocked back considerably in the process. Although admittedly, they're not too far behind when it comes to metal. And actually when it comes to army value, they're way ahead of Thomas. Thomas's entire army value was those crabs. Getting some scorpions of their own. But yeah, Thomas is kind of behind. And near this entire time has been building up. Waiting for some kind of position to work with. Like, waiting for the right time to push. And this looks like what they think to be it. The Merlin coming into position to start dealing with this stuff. Should be able to deal with basically everything Izzerides built, including that massive metal extractor in the center. But honestly, Anir, if you look at the stats, 94 to 67. Yeah, Anir's way ahead. And also, again, sandcastles being what it is, terrain is soft. 
Terraform doesn't change that. I believe that's a global thing. Oh yeah, right. That's why Thomas has so, so little in the way of anything. It's the Trinity, which has just been stuffed. Either right spotted that, took it out. That might be Thomas. That I think that's going to be it for Thomas. They had a decent run, took out Jasper's forces with a bunch of crabs, but that Trinity, that Trinity swallowed up so much of their metal that could have been army. They're ten thousand metal behind army value wise. They're somehow way behind defense wise. I think that's a bug. That that's showing 107, 104. Like it was showing 100k right from the start. I don't think enough was built to justify 100k. But I don't know. And Anir's anti-nukes actually could still be useful later in the game. We'll see. The game is far from over. Detriment coming up from Jasper. I, mean, I guess they figure, hey, no one's paying attention to me. I might as well build up a giant strider that can totally wreck face. I can't say I disagree. That's not a bad strategy. But seriously, though, how much... Well, it's near. It does have a lot of defenses going. I just found it weird that it's... I, I don't know. That might be a bug. I'm sure someone in the YouTube comments will let me know whether or not the defensive thing is a bug. Like I said, I haven't used this player list very much. Oh, worth pointing out, though. Tom is getting a lot off the reclaim from the Trinity, so it's not a complete loss. Turning that into a couple scorpions, turning that into... Oh, not much else, actually. Jasper is the one making the detriment. So six minutes before that detriment's done. Could be seeing that turn into... Probably... It'll be some momentum, but again... Jasper's gonna have to be careful here. Thomas painted a target on their back for a little while, but Izzeride took that away. And now I'd say Izzeride is the biggest threat aggressively. Anir is gonna be the toughest nut, nut to crack. But Izzeride has the center expansion. They have a bunch of overdrive going into it as well. Like, sheesh, times three on top of that. Not to mention, they are... Like, they are winning the air game. So they can kind of just go into anything and take it out, if they're careful. Anir has some air, but it's not going to be enough. Jasper focusing entirely on getting the detriment up. Which... Yeah, that's taking a sweet time. Oh, folks are getting some of the crabs. Interesting play. Resurrecting crabs coming in from what they were attacked by. Very interesting play. Oh, they're going to resurrect... No, they're going to reclaim the Hercules. Thought they'd resurrect the Hercs as well. Nah, it looks like some reclaim, some resurrect. Not a bad play, but more importantly... we. Where the heck? Ah, here it is. Scorpion's coming in. Thomas trying to take out Jasper. But the Racketeers are at least slowing things down. I don't think it's going to be enough. Jasper's not in a good defensive position. They have a couple of the crabs that are resurrected. And actually, that may be enough. The Scorpion's forced to retreat for now. I don't know that'll be enough overall. But at the very least, that's something to hold the line. Turn that into by time for the detriment. That could be all they need. Well, regardless, Izzeride probably in the best position to deal with this. But even then, they're not really going for trying to take advantage of the situation. I think they might be afraid that if they attack, a near will go after them, and a near indeed. Going after them. Applying a bit of pressure on their eastern front. But Jasper is getting a bit of a ways through the detriment. They're halfway done. Only a few minutes remain, and nothing is really threatening them in the meantime. Again, I don't think Jasper's going to be able to convert that into a victory. I think once the detriment comes out, Jasper will have painted such a large target on their back that it'll be a massive challenge to get through. But that might not be enough. I mean, again, there's five scorpions coming through. The crabs, especially cloaked crabs, were able to stop. Oh, but then the scorpions are cloaked as well. 
nothing is really getting in their way. I mean, they don't see any massive targets, and actually... Oh, the Vandals will spot them first. And now the crabs come in. There we go. That's that's the defense that's needed. Crabs come in. Oh, but there's the stunning. Wasn't sure if would be waiting on the stun until after that, but no, they played that perfectly. Jasper cannot get this detriment up in time. Desperately trying to get some snitches over here, but it's not going to be enough. Lego's looking to find an any opening whatsoever, but no, that was perfectly played by Thomas. Jasper is out of the match. Scorpions come in here, finish things off, and now Thomas, what is the response going to be? Because you have painted a massive target on your back. You just killed another player. I hope we're prepared to kill the other two. I, what do you mean capture? There's no capture mechanic in this game. Oh, no, there is. Do Dominatrix. Yeah, what I'm saying. There's no capture mechanic outside of Dominatrix, and there's no Dominatrix being built. Sorry, I was getting confused because in Total Annihilation, there is a build-to-capture mechanic, if I recall correctly, but non 0 k Like, you can, you can use your own constructor to capture an opponent's unit. It's not like Dominatrix, it's, it is a permanent capture. But that's not the case in Zero K, so that threw me off for a second. Anyway, Jasper has been wiped. Ezeride and Anir, though, those are the real threats. Now, Thomas, they do have a lot of army value coming in here. Like, they have a boatload of army value. They've just taken all of Jasper's territory. Jasper's going to be trying to come back in here with the Athenas, but they're they're out of the game. They're done. So Thomas is taking this territory. Anir and Izzeride obviously see the threat. Izzeride is going for it. Anir looks to be just focusing on defense for now. And they have a solid defense. Well, it must, must be noted, they do have a solid defensive line. But what are they going to do to deal with Thomas? Because Thomas is just completely destroy Jasper. I mean, I'll admit it's kind of impressive at least how how valiantly Jasper remains in the fight, but no, they're done. Now on top of that, four Merlins going north to deal with Izzeride. Izzeride looks like they've managed to grab a great deal of reclaim to their name, but it may not matter. It's Thomas with all the static economy of both them and Jasper up against what is a reasonably scary army, but a lot of it's in the air, and we already see loads of tridents ready to deal with this. Like, Ezerride's got to be careful. Their air dominance is being called into question and could very well be destroyed right away. No additional trinities being built. That was a bit of a mistake that Thomas is not going to repeat. I mean, it would have been cool, but no, that's not going to happen. Same time, though, near double-checking what's going on, sees what Thomas is building. Mostly just repairing everything, honestly. Not really building much. All they really care about is getting the metal extractors. From here, more Merlins, more funnel webs. Oh. And no one really contesting that. Thomas, with all the reclaim from Jasper's base... Plus the static economy is accessing that a little bit, though. I will grant. They're not actually using as well as they could. Now, they're only pushing 75 metal per second into this funnel web. And they are... Or, wait. That's minus 10. That was minus 15. Oh. Oh, they nerfed Strider Hub recently. Wow, I feel silly. I'm surprised I didn't notice that. I don't play with Striders very often. I didn't notice that the Strider Hub had been nerfed recently from 15 to 10. And I know some of the YouTube comments going to point out, it's like, what are you talking about? That nerf happened months ago. And it's like, I don't play with Striders. I play 1v1 my, primarily. <laughs> Striders rarely come up. So never mind. Strider Hub is not... So it's 70 coming in here. So unfortunately, Thomas is accessing a fair bit. 
Yeah, they need a few more caretakers or just to turn all of their work. Where are their workers? Ward's like build another factory over in Jasper's base. <laughs> why not? I mean, really, why not? That'd be a good staging ground for a near. I mean, we're already seeing now the Scorpion's trying to come in here for Izzeride and finding finding some trouble. These ride already with a couple of final webs, making it difficult with you, a really clever use of shielding, actually. Not quite... I don't know, it is quite clever enough. It is absolutely quite clever enough. The Redback's able to take advantage of that. The Cerberus does go down, but still, two Scorpions for a Cerberus. Not a bad trade. Actually, a really good trade. 6,000 metal for 2,500 metal. He is right absolutely coming out ahead there. And that was most of the scorpions. How many scorpions are left here? We have... Yeah, that's it. That's the only scorpion. Out of the five that were sent to deal with Jasper, only one remains in Jasper's base. And it's not lucky to manage to do much. Although Jasper, rather kindly, sending a bunch of fleas to take care of one of Veneer's Merlins. That'll just help... That will help Thomas. Not really Jasper. But hey, you know, do what you will. Jasper with the Merlin's at least trying, at least getting through the funnel of shields gradually. Sorry, Thomas with the... No, not Jasper. Thomas with the Merlin's. And this Merlin's strike, is that going to be enough? Oh, yes it will. There it goes, the main Merlin Strike actually managing to get a little bit of damage in there. Not much yet, though. The next next wave of Merlins will be able to do the trick, but then also the Ducks coming in. To finding very little over the eastern side of the map, however. Merlins from Anir finishing off Jasper. Like, Jasper is desperately holding on, but it's not really going to be enough and oh are they they are they're seriously resurrecting this scorpion you know why not i mean the scorpion did a lot of damage but wow jasper i admire what they're trying to do here i don't think they have time like this is going to take forever but hey why not go for it see what happens <laughs> i must say i am impressed by jasper's tenacity But sadly, it doesn't match the position they're in materially, so they are still basically just out of the game. Same time, though, Funwebs on top of the Big Bertha is making it very difficult for Thomas to get into Izzeride's base. Or, sorry, yeah, for Thomas to get into Izzeride's base. Izzeride, do they have... They don't have anti-nukes, do they? No, they... D oh, man. If Thomas is able to rebuild that Trinity in the meantime and not have to worry about it, that would actually be a really strong play. Izzeride has no anti-nukes. They relied entirely on the Ravens, which worked, mind you, but there are no anti-nukes. So if a nuke came up from actually either Anir or Thomas, it would be completely it would be completely devastating. It would just destroy everything that has been built up here. Thomas, however, also kind of losing the southeast. Anir definitely looking to contest that. Especially as Thomas is distracted on the northern flank. And near just biding their time, slowly pushing in with the funnel web. Slowly finding their way into the push. Jasper, however, has resigned from the game, so they are they have decided they are indeed out. So with that, Thomas has Thomas and Near have wiped out Jasper. But Anir looks to be pushing Thomas back. And now Thomas having to fight on two fronts. Giving Izzeride a bit of room to breathe now. Granted, the Zenith is on the way. A few minutes remain before that's completed, and I don't think anyone has scouted it out. Thomas has been fairly diligent about ensuring the airspace is protected. So that they don't get scouted again. Because that ruined their initial strategy with the Trinity. Now granted, Scorpions worked really well, but yeah, you know, now it's a little bit hard to say, because Anir has taken a very strong economic position. So we see... Or don't see... Is it, did the... Oh, that's why. Thinking, did the... Did the thing break? No, it didn't break. There's so many overdrive circles that it's just covering the entire thing in orange. Didn't even notice the entire map was completely covered. So let's turn that off for now, because it's getting a bit distracting. And... Move on to what 
Izariah is trying to do, which is hold on to the line as the Berthas are starting to make short work of their base. Despite the final webs, the Zenith is up, but there's only as much you can do. And sadly for Thomas, they didn't manage to hold on to a lot of the metal they were grabbing because, again, they were accessing. They only have, like, 70 metal per second they can use. Maybe a bit more with the funnel web. Actually, no, definitely more with the funnel web. They can get up to 110 off just the funnel web alone. Or a funnel web plus the caretakers. Sadly, they don't have a lot of reclaim to work with anymore, and they've lost southeast. Anir taking that southeast slowly but surely. Building very safely. And Anir right now, I should point out, is about on is a little ahead of Thomas in terms of army value. Overall about on par, just a little bit ahead. But now they're going for a detriment. Looks like the main reason why they're only a little bit ahead of Thomas is because they're setting up to have a 24k lead very shortly. Because, yes, that... No, 20,000, not 24. 20k lead. So, yeah, give it a minute. Give it a minute and things will change. And then Zenith will be up around the same time. Depending on whether or not Thomas can find a good reclaim source. But they've been kind of exhausted. There's not much... There isn't really much here. Look at what's up. Oops. Come on, you. Oh. Yeah, there is nothing. On the entire... Okay, the entire map is quite a bit, but... The areas Thomas can access? Oh, actually, Anir is in that spot now. So, no, there's nowhere that Thomas can access that actually has that available. So, Thomas, what are you doing now? Well, it's hard to say. And Zenith is coming up pretty shortly. Detriment is up, though! And Izurai looks to be dealing with that. Well, Izurai looks to be scouting it. They're not going to be dealing with it anytime soon. Not with a couple Swifts. That's for sure. But the, detri the Detriment has been spotted. Izurai and Thomas, I think, realize they need to team up to get rid of an ear. Right. In terms of army value, they absolutely have to. Like, they are... Even if the two of them team up. Judging by the chat, it looks like a near... Yeah, Izzaride seems to realize this. Thomas seems to realize this. Oh no. Okay. So both players do realize they need to deal with this. The question of how they will do so remains to be seen. Swift's coming... Grounded Swift's coming in! Clever. Izzarai taking out an year's entire southeast expansion. I mean, that's a thing you can do. Swifts don't have to remain in the air. Actually, that is really clever. We have Izzarai Swifts here. And Nier Swifts in the air. Izzarai Swifts on the ground, but flees from an ear to take them out. Cleverly done, because Swifts will not fire missiles at Swifts that are on the ground. Okay, they're AFK Berthas. Oh, the Berthas are in hold fire. What? Oh, I know why. Yeah, because if they weren't on hold fire, they'd go for Thomas before they go for Anir. It's just that Izzarite hasn't gone and told them to target a bunch of Anir stuff instead. Which, to be fair, how far is their attack range? Okay, that's pretty far. Yeah, no, they could totally get rid of Anir stuff. So I'm not entirely sure why they're not attacking, to be honest. I guess that's what they do sometimes. You know, sometimes they just don't attack because of reasons? I'm really not sure what's going on here. I, I, I'm really not sure what the strategy is because we have a detriment on the field and a bunch of Berthas, which would wipe out the detriment no problem, but they're being completely unused. What is Izzaride's vision right now? Well, they can see the detriment. They can see a lot of the shields, too. I don't know what they're waiting for. Like, what, are they waiting for some sort of promise from... from Thomas? Like, how they're gonna do this? Oh, okay. That, there we go! Now, they're waiting for the detriment to get closer. They're waiting to see the whites of its eyes. I think they might have waited a bit too long. They're gonna lose the entire center expansion if they're not careful. 
And I will comment, the Berthas are doing a reasonably decent job here. It's just... Uh, safety out of 86, that's yeah, pretty good, actually. So that's a good start. But... Oh, I was going to say, but there's not much coming in to help deal with that. Though, the Zenith is here. Why are... Are you attacking anything, Zenith? I don't see the Zenith having been queued for anything. DRP coming up as well. I mean, what is the Zenith being used for? I don't see any meteors at all here. I mean, I would have expected something, but no, meteors are not what's happening. I mean, the Zenith is on hold fire. I don't think that's... I guess maybe it does. I thought that was a different state for that. Yeah, the... oh, it's off. There's a different state for that. It's the activation state, which is currently set to off for some reason. I have no idea why it's not... Like, what? Well, what is Thomas waiting for? Oh, maybe they don't want people to know they have the Zenith, but they still could be amassing meteors. Although, I guess it would still tell people they have the Zenith. Hmm. Well, another detriment is coming up. Not really a whole lot dealing with the first one. It's not even a half HP. Like a near, a near currently looking very strong. Like strong enough that I'm actually a little unsure about this. I'll just speed this up because it looks like this is going to get a bit of stalemate situation. A near. I mean, what are you going to do? There's Zenith that's doing nothing. There's a DRP that might be doing something soon. But that's not the strongest super weapon. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's like... When you have so many shields in the field, it's not that big of a deal. Yeah, I mean, Sushus, I get the idea of saving up for a burst for the Zenith, but they're not using it. It's not on. It's not collecting meteors. So there's no saving happening. That's why I'm confused. If the me if the thing was on but just kind of hanging out, I could see it. But again, I maybe they're worried about people seeing that there's a zenith being built. I don't know. In either case, the zenith is going to be being built up soon enough. Or sorry, sorry, the DRP is going to be built up soon enough. The zenith apparently is just a waste of metal. Ooh, BB's opening things up. Detriment starting to take some damage. Being very vulnerable, in fact. So having opened that up, there's some hope, potentially? I mean, granted, there's a second entire detriment being built up. That has just been completed. And Thomas still working on the DRP. I mean, I, it's just, I don't, I really don't understand the logic here. The Berthas at least make some sense, and he's right also with the Scorpions, possibly going to try to find some opening for them some at some point. But Ezeride... I'm sorry, Thomas, rather, not doing much. Ezeride is doing quite a bit, but Thomas... I mean, they're defending reasonably okay. Oh, but have they been scouted? I think they might have been. Oops. Yes, they got scouted. Anira knows exactly what's happening. You can see it in the ghosts. Yeah, Anir had seen it, though. Oh. Good shot there. Is that a Bertha shot, or is there something else being built? No, looks like that was a Bertha shot. Ah, uh, now the Xanthasm spotted there. So it was entirely that. Thomas didn't want anyone to see that the Zenith had been built. And there's the turn. Ezerai doesn't want to do all that. And Anir... I mean, Anir's sitting pretty. They are way ahead this entire match. They have half the map under their control. I guess it's a matter of when Thomas decides to use it. How long they decide to save up for. As we already see, that's skin somewhere. 
60 meteors already. I think... I mean, Thomas probably wants to get the full 300. <laughs> I don't know. Drop it onto the Berthas here. Oof. A lot of shields, though. How many fun loves are there? That is a ridiculous amount of funnel webs. Like, you can't even see through the sides of their shields. There's so many of them. Birth is almost there, and the meters haven't dropped. And yep, right onto the shields. Exactly as expected. But I... Yeah, I don't see that. The DRP... It's in position. It's getting set up. They're going for his right as well. Not sure how Thomas can work with this, though. They've got a heavily damaged Zenith. There's the next Meteor Storm coming in, and it doesn't really do much. DRP, however, following up. Able to get a bit of fire in. Oh, the DRP. There it is. There's damage being dealt. They might have underestimated it. Fire is able to get under the shield, so that at least damages things a bit. However, it may not be enough. The DRPs... Oh, never mind. There's the EMP shot in the DRP. That does do enough damage. At least stops the Aegis. Another Meteor Strike gets through! There it goes! Meteor Strike getting rid of a couple of the big Berthas. Several of the eight... Uh, Aegis's, maybe one of the funnel webs or two. Funnel webs are being retreated. Many of them are almost dead. The shielding is gone. And the DRP able to do the necessary damage to get rid of these Berthas. Of course, a lot of confidence on the part of a near that is right able to stop this. I mean, the meteor strike to get rid of the scorpions. There it goes. It doesn't actually kill them. Merlins, on the other hand, being a fair bit more effective against those scorpions. So the big Berthas are still up, but yeah, the DRP in the middle of Izzerod's base. Thomas doing quite a bit of damage, considering they... I mean, all you really have is the DRP. And some Merlins for defense. But the Zenith is up. It is being reasonably well protected by a giant Terra Wall. And the DRP is able to slow down... Israel's production. Of course, how large is the range of the DRP? Well, okay, the Zenith is long enough to get into near space. The DRP is not. The DRP cannot threaten an ear. Can threaten Israel? Well, might be able to threaten Israel. The Merl Merlins are all dead. Bunch of ducks coming in here, trying their best to defend against the scorpions. Does not look sufficient, though. Zenith's doing their best to get rid of the big Berthas, but the shield wall has been rebuilt. Though, to be fair, all of Izzeride's production has been destroyed. So Izzeride has still been heavily weakened. A bit of a Pyrrhic victory on their part, and Anir will probably just take the game from them from under their feet. Ooh. Anti-nuke death explosion finishing them off. Getting rid of the Scorpions, but here come the Ravens. All the Trinity, all the Tridents were already dead. Only as so much I can do. The Zenith goes down. Thomas still has the DRP, but that can't threaten an ear. Of course, these are right having lost their production centers and having lost almost all their units, making them very open. And an ear right now, an ear can basically just go in. They they can just walk in whenever they like, just wipe out everything. Both these players have been thoroughly weakened. There's not much left for either of them. So with that all taken care of, although the DRP is still around, not a whole lot that Thomas can really do to win this. They can just kind of delay defeat from Anir. But there's no chance they're going to be teaming up. Like, it's pretty clear right now that Anir is not... No, there's, there's not enough. It's like, as the spectator's pointing out, not enough to kill Anir. Actually, are these fleas coming in here going to be enough? No, they can't be enough. That'd be quite the cherry tap, but I don't think it's going to happen. And more Tridents are back, so at the very least, Thomas is still in a reasonably good defensive position. Problem, of course, for them is that they are 
not in the best position when it comes to being able to actually strike back. And they have a couple funnel webs, they have the DRP. They're able to deal some damage to Anir's front line. Maybe get some damage into the southeast. I don't think it's going to be enough, though. The detriments are looking to be pulled in. Yeah, there's... Oh, this is beautiful. You have... How many gnats are even here? 60 gnats, 29 tridents, and two transported detriments. That is going to be it flowing over the damn wall. Because that dam really is getting breached. And this looks to be it for Thomas. Detriment drop coming in the tridents. Coming in here to defend. I, I mean, I love using the gnats here in the front lines. Just to block things off of the tridents come in. First detriment is dropped. Ooh, Hercules actually. First detriment is blown up. Wait, did they? Okay, the first detriment looked like it fell through the ground. Ah, there it is. It did fall through the ground. Found itself in the river, and now is back up at the top. Has to go up the ramp, but it's still a very strong position to be in. There's not a whole lot Thomas can do. They're not, they're not even in a kingmaker position. Like, there's not a whole lot they can do to give Ezerite any kind of advantage. Ezerite has also managed to rebuild relatively quickly. Just need a couple production centers back up, and they already have the air plant. It's actually really hard to tell. Sheesh. It's almost impossible to see through the shields there. And now it's just a matter of detriments taking out Thomas, and then near. They'll be turning their sights to deal with Israelite. I mean, this is basically how this game's gonna go. Hence the speed up, because it's like, it's the game's result is pretty obvious. I don't see Israelite. Unless Israelite throws out something really clever, I don't see it. No. And the DRP is making it difficult to really do anything. The DRP, however, is down, opening things up. Anir has basically opened things up for Izzerai to deal enough damage to Thomas. Well, to rebuild on their own, deal enough damage to Thomas. But again, Anir. They've got this. Like, this is Thomas down. So once that's done, I mean, it's basically a matter of turning on to Izzerai and finishing them off. Ooh. Got rid of the G Moho Geo. Nice little nuclear explosion in the middle to stop everything else from existing. The Singularity Reactor is still there, but, meh. They're gone. Oh, wait. No, Big Breath isn't a hold fire. Of course, not sure why. And again, he's are right. Their only hope at this point is to try to break through Anir's forces, which... Okay! How many are you? No, not you, the fleas! 168 fleas! Okay, then. That's how that's gonna go. 168 fleas coming right in here. From Anir to finish off Thomas. So we are gonna see the mass fleas. Because why not? Actually, are they finishing off Thomas, or are they just being put in there so that... When the next attack, or when Anir takes this, they have a defensive line. It looks like the latter. They're setting up to surround Izzerud, and there's... Not much Izzerud has. I mean, their army value is way lower. Now they're getting a DRP of their own, but it's taking forever to build up. I mean, it's six minutes at best with their current metal income. And that's not all they're doing with their metal. Yeah, the DRP, not really looking to be that great. Like that, that's that's showing showing some weakness. But hey, Thomas, you had a good run. Did a good job. You got rid of Jasper. You had, you threatened people enough that you became the target. But that's that's how FFA goes. You got to be careful because yeah, you can easily put a target on your back, which is exactly what happened. And now he's a ride. <laughs> you think you can survive? Good question. Well, 
That's the first answer. So, I mean, really, set the big Berthas onto, onto just fire when fire at will. I would have wrecked a bunch of Veneers' base. I don't know why that's not being done. Like, really, just, just set that up. Just do the thing. It'll be fine. But no, there it is. A near turning onto their former ally, Izzeride. Making life that much more difficult for them as Izzeride. Their only real hope at this point seems to be the Disco Rave Party, and the Disco Rave Party isn't really doing them all that many favors. All right, so I'm, to my knowledge, there you don't need metal to run the Big Bertha. Like... Generally, when there's a thing that you need something for... No, you don't need metal for this. I don't know why people are saying that. It's just because it's on whole fire for... I think because of reasons related to the previous truce between Thomas and Ezeride. But I don't know why it hasn't been set back to fire at will. No, maybe I was thinking maybe, maybe for reload time. But I really don't think so. The reload time isn't that... It's like four seconds. It's not that big of a deal. Fire at will is going to be far more effective in that this entire time it would have been wiping out a near's base while the attack was happening. So at the very least, a near would not have been as strong a position to work from. And the DRP still coming, still being worked on. Oh, on the other hand, there is a Trinity. That explains a lot of where Azerite's metal is going. I did not see that trinity. I dare say it won't do much good, because there's anti-nukes everywhere, and I don't think Azerite knows about half of them. On the other hand, a trinity fired off in the middle of the map, hitting the detriments, would actually get rid of them. There are no anti-nukes close enough. Or, well, no, there's got to be anti-nukes close enough. Yeah, we do see the anti-nuke range. It's the gray circles here. Now they're green circles, and... Uh, oh man, that's firing from inside the anti-nuke range. I mean, it's possible if the shot was here. We might see it kill off the detriments. But that's the only option. There it is. Where is it firing to? Like, it has to fire in this... Like, it has to fire this way. That's the only way it can hit anything. And I imagine that Anir knows that, and if they see the nuclear launch detected, they're gonna go, Oh, I just retreat my detriments. So in fairness, that one detriment's taking a lot of damage from the Big Berthas. You know, those anti go down, that could be a lot. Mmm, one of the detriments is down. And of course, the Berthas are in range of the anti-nukes. I, again, I don't think Izzeride knows that they're there. I'll check in a second. Well, I know about one of them. I don't know about that one. I know about the one over the north. I don't know if they know about this one down here. No, they know, they know about half of them. That is roughly what I expected. I mean, that's not nothing. The ones they do know about should still be wiped out as soon as possible. And one detriment has gone down. Massive blow that way, because now that one detriment down, Israel has room to breathe. They can get the Disco Rave Party up relatively quickly, maybe? I don't know. Where's their metal going? It can't be going into the into the missile. The, no more stockpiling going on there. waiting for time to strike. Perhaps they're waiting for the DRP to be done. DRP into Anir's base until they see some anti-nukes go down. And then fire off the nuke when the anti-nukes are done. Not really sure I agree with that strategy, because they could birth them down. Actually, it looks to be the intention... Yep, that is exactly the intention. Birth is going for the anti-nukes. Possibly revealing the fact that nukes are a thing. Or maybe not. Maybe it's hard to tell from the accuracy. 
I mean, they're going straight for the anti-nukes, but Berthas have quite a large accuracy variance. Ooh, at the same time, the funnel ups trying to get through building up some defenses. Will they get rid of the fleas? One of them will go down, though. Ooh, and that takes up many of the defenses as well. But Ezeride is not taking this lying down. Having killed a detriment, they do have a position to work from. On the other hand, there's a DRP being re being resurrected by a near. As that first DRP, or well, the first DRP is getting rebuilt. The second DRP is almost ready, and much more heavily shielded than the first one. And now that DRP, yeah, it's about another two or three minutes before that gets done. But now with the first DRP, it's 26. Come on, finish, finish, finish ye DRP. No, the DRP's not finishing yet. There it is! The DRP has finished! And now it turns to fire to wipe out the horrendous anti-nuke. And heavily damage the shields in the way to make it easier to get... Actually, the, that anti-nuke's gone. But the rest of the anti-nukes, get rid of those two. Again, Israel is aware of the position of several of the anti-nukes, especially the anti-nukes in this base. Although I kind of feel like they could have built a two or three more missiles in the meantime. Or maybe now build a couple more missiles, because they might still need multiple missiles to deal with the anti-nukes. Same time, though... Disco Ray Party is done for a near. Oh. Oh, didn't I projectile? Not at first, anyway. Of course, the downside is there's half a dozen funnel webs on top of the Berthas. And the Berthas are well in position to get rid of the DRP again. Although, of course, the focus is more the anti nukes. Dealing with those as quickly as possible. Also, to be fair, a direct nuke strike would work here. Like, Ezerai could fire a nuke in that direction, and, I mean, the anti-nukes are already in place, but they're not in place there. Oh, and on the other hand, oh, I didn't see that. Zenith coming in here. Brilliantly done. It's gone now, but nice meteor strike just to open things up a bit. It's giving the DRP a lot more room to work with. Again, this nuke, I don't think... I mean, I know Ezerai is probably scared of anti-nukes ruining everything. And actually, maybe it doesn't matter. Might not matter. DRP coming is getting ripped apart by Redbacks. Though Nimbuses are putting a stop to that. We're trying to. Getting hit a little bit in the process. Is there a proxy? There is a proxy spider factory! There it is! I was trying to figure out what the heck that was. Ooh, at the same time, there's the Redbacks coming through here. Nimbus is taking damage off the Threshers. If they go down, that could be the DRP done. These red looks to be retake look to be taking the southwest. Not to mention the Bertha or the DRP rather gets rid of the Zenith, gets rid of everything on the south and the center east side of the map. However, Trinity is ready. Anir is ready to nuke out anything. There are no anti-nukes. This entire game, Ezerite has not built a single anti-nuke. Granted, the DRP is down. The Redbacks have done their job. Redbacks and Funnel Ups, very nicely played there. But Anir sees there are no anti-nukes. There's the launch. Gonna be any second now. Yep, there's the selection. There's the launch. There's the game. I mean, maybe, maybe the funnel web shields will, will protect it. That would be hilarious. I don't know if they have enough shield to do that. No, not do that's 400. I mean, they might. Combined. No! No, they do not. The Berthas go down. Funnel webs go down. The DRP's still up, but not for long. And the return fire is not going to be successful. I gotta say, the DRP's doing a fair bit of damage. 
It's opening things up over to the north, but there's too many covering anti-nukes to make it work, even with the EMP. How long of EMP is that? No, 10 seconds. Yeah, I mean, if that EMP shot hit all of them, it might be able to open things up, and the DRP's not doing a bad job, but it can't hit the southeast. That being said... That being said, there's still an opening here. Is a ride able to take the southwest? Putting themselves back to a reasonable position. Getting the anti-nuke up, finally. I mean, they lost so many funnel webs in the process. Like, 15,000 metal worth of funnel webs. That was totally worth it. A near... Probably still took the match as a result. Oh! Singularity reactor went down too from the looks of it. The anti nuke not even done. And the southwest has been taken. And if Anir gets opened up somewhere, like anti nukes get destroyed around any region that's, you know, something Ezerite may want to grab, well, then it's going to be nuked out in a hurry. But unfortunately, Ezerite only has the one nuke. Like, they haven't fired a single nuke, they haven't been building up more nukes. On the other hand, there's still a continuous nuke production from a near. On top of the DRP getting killed by fleas, ah, oh, that that's not going to be it yet. I mean, it's probably is in terms of the actual game progress. But Israel is not throwing in the towel yet. Their economy is still reasonably strong. If they get rid of the detriment. They might be able to open things up in terms of reclaim. But that's a massive if. That is the world's biggest if. I mean, fire a nuke into this base, maybe, but that would just basically be it. Yeah. I, I mean, I gotta be honest, Israel did an amazing job pulling themselves back into this game. It does appear to be over now, but Israel has held on beautifully, regardless. I mean, they expanded from their main base over to the southwest. They did get nuked in the main base, which ultimately led to their surrender. But, man, that was still an amazingly played game. And I gotta give it to Thomas for just... I mean, really just wrecking shit as much as they did. <laughs> they destroyed Jasper. They took a big chunk out of Izzeride. If they had defended against a near in the southeast, they would have had a decent chance of actually taking the game. But that's the thing, when you set up, when you set yourself up as a target, you have to care, you have to follow through with that. Otherwise, you're not going to win. But that was that. So we do have one more match today. It is going to be not quite so dramatic. A 1v1 between Izzeride and Randy on Living Lands. Stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes.